a spoiler alert, with fasting, pretty much all your minerals are super important, but there are some that do extra cool things. So when we're fasting, there's a couple of things that are very important that are often overlooked. For one, gluconeogenesis, which this long weird word, what that means is gluconeogenesis is the ability for your liver to produce glucose from other substrates. It's very, very important that you understand that when you're fasting, although your glucose levels come down because everything stabilizes, they don't go to zero, okay? This is very, you know, somewhat remedial, but it's important to note. Your glucose levels are still present and glucose is imperative. Your brain still runs on glucose. Cells in your body run on glucose as well as they also can run on fats. But when you're fasting, you need to be able to produce glucose, but you're not eating. So how do you get glucose? Well, the liver breaks down other substrates, proteins. It breaks down uh, glycerol backbone from fatty acid breakdown. Anyway, bottom line is that when you look at magnesium, you find that magnesium is critical for gluconeogenesis to occur. So there's four enzymes that are required for gluconeogenesis. Actually, I should take that back. There's a lot of enzymes required for gluconeogenesis. There are four what are called rate-limiting enzymes required for gluconeogenesis. A rate-limiting enzyme means that without that particular step or without that particular enzyme, you have a serious problem. It means gluconeogenesis cannot occur. It is a rate limiting. Without it, it is limited and cannot continue. Of these four rate limiting enzymes, magnesium is required for three of them. So 75% of the rate limiting enzymes that are required to even produce glucose via gluconeogenesis require magnesium. So if you're deficient in magnesium, you could be slowing down the ability to produce glucose in its natural way during a fast, leading to dysregulation there. But that's kind of the scary side of it, right? If we're deficient in magnesium, then this doesn't happen. But why is it so cool in terms of other things? Gene expression is another piece, okay? So it turns out that magnesium plays a very powerful role in gene expression for particular things that are associated with fasting. So this law makes sense in a second. There was a study that was published in the journal Magnesium Research. The study took a look at, uh, in this case, gestational diabetes. So women with gestational diabetes, they had acquired diabetes while they were pregnant. It's a relatively common thing, it's looked at a lot. So what they did is they took these women, divided them into two groups. One group had 250 milligrams of magnesium oxide every day for six weeks as a supplement. The other group had a placebo. So the magnesium group definitely saw a decrease in their fasting glucose. This is great, right? No matter what, this is what we're interested in, right? They had a 9.7 milligrams per deciliter drop compared to the placebo group having a 0.1 milligram per deciliter drop. Huge difference in the magnesium group. I've done other videos talking about things like that. But what was most fascinating was they had an upregulation of the expression of PPAR. What the heck does that mean? Before I get into the gene expression piece, which is insanely fascinating stuff, while you are fasting, it is okay to consume magnesium. Okay, it's not going to break a fast. It's a water-soluble mineral. I recommend that people do take minerals when they're fasting, okay, because we lose minerals a lot when we're fasting. Kidneys expel the extra water because our insulin levels are low. So not only is magnesium good for fasting, but you're probably becoming a little bit deficient in it during a fast, along with sodium, along with potassium. So there's a few different electrolytes that I use in different times, some more potassium focused, some more sodium magnesium focused. The one that I like the most for like general use when I'm fasting is Element because it just tastes so dang good. But it has a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium. So they're paying attention to a really good ratio there, which is great when you're fasting. So they are a sponsor on this channel. They have been for a couple of years now. That link down below will actually get you a sample pack. So you don't have to pay anything other than a few bucks for shipping. So really cool, it gives you eight different sample packs. So you can try different flavors of Element, see if you like it, pay for shipping. If you don't like it, you don't have to buy anymore. It's that simple. So that link is down below if you wanna try them out during your fasts or just try them out even during your workouts. It's pretty darn cool just to get your sodium, potassium, magnesium in. So obviously something we're talking about, something that's relevant, but you gotta do what works for you. But it's at least a free trial. It's probably worth checking out. So that link is down below in the description. Let's make it very simple. Okay, gene expression is your ability to express a gene. So a gene that gets expressed means 
that gene is now essentially activated and you're able to act upon it. So let's say, just making it very colloquial, hypothetical, and overarched, <laughs> let's say you expressed genes that made you better at running. When you express those genes, it allows you to live up to that genetic potential. Okay, it's a very important thing, and we're constantly expressing genes, right? We're constantly opening and closing these different lockers of different genes and different abilities. So in this particular case, magnesium helped express PPAR, which if you're a veteran of my channel, you know it's something I talk about a lot. PPAR is what is required for fat adaptation. So when we are fasting, we are encouraging the activation of PPAR. Okay, turns out that magnesium influences that activation even more, okay? When we activate PPAR, it allows us to get better at using fats for fuel. This is tremendous when we're fasting because if we get better at using fats, then we have less risk of breaking down protein or less risk of all kinds of other things, right? The body just learns how to use the fats and it gets good at it. But another thing that it expressed was it expressed GLUT1. Now GLUT1 is what's called a glucose transporter. Now if you imagine consuming a bunch of glucose, a bunch of carbohydrates, and you only had five shuttle buses to take that glucose to different places in the body, well guess what? That glucose would be piling up in your bloodstream, right? But let's say you had 500 shuttle buses taking glucose. You'd have a lot less in the bloodstream, a lot less hanging out at the transfer station and more getting on the actual buses, right? So that is obviously a good thing. So the more that we express in the way of glucose transporters, the better. So the combination of expressing glucose transporters so we can actually use carbs better, and the combination of that with expressing PPAR alpha so we can actually use fat better, sounds like the best of both worlds. Not to mention there's a downregulation in the expression of LDL or oxidized LDL receptors. Now oxidized LDL, separate story for a different day, but that's LDL that's been oxidized, affected by free radicals, affected by reactive oxygen species. If we're limiting the docking area for that oxidized LDL, then we can further excrete the oxidized LDL. So we have a triple whammy effect. Improvement in the utilization of fats, which is great for fasting. Improvement in the proper glucose transport, which is great for fasting, but even more important for after you break your fast. And an improvement in potentially the clearance of oxidized LDL. So magnesium just becomes this very, very, very important piece overall. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.